So this is the before and after. Okay, this is the last of four seats that I'm going to be redoing here. So I left the worst for last, as you can see, and I'm going to be showing you step by step how I'm doing this with, obviously it's not going to come out the same way. I'm not going to have two different uh, types of vinyl. I'm not going to have any piping, but it's a lot less uh, in cost. I'll just wrap it entirely in vinyl with this material here, this marine vinyl that I purchased. And um, you'll learn all the things that I've learned what not to do, what mistakes I've made throughout the way, because this is my last one. So I've learned quite a few things of what not to do, and I'm going to show you here as well. Okay, so when you're beginning the process of disassembly, uh, you have this ribbon here that hides all of the staples from this backing paper to the vinyl to this actual uh, item right here, which I really don't know the name is. So you have one of two ways to do this. You can take, it's very hard, brittle. You can heat it up with a hairdryer to get it soft and get in here so you don't really cause much damage and put the screwdriver and try to get, you know, find the uh, staple and remove it. Or you can ever so easily just work to go on a hard surface and basically push them up to extract them. So you can reuse this item here. Uh, just to show you something real quick right now. So you just push it up like that and then out comes the staples. And you'll do that the whole way around. Okay, so don't want to bore you with doing all of those. I'll get back to you in a minute. So it's coming up pretty easily with this method. You just get under there to find the staple and then use the wide blade to sort of lift it up. Okay, so now you see all these staples here. And they're all pretty much in the middle here. So if you just find a hard surface, which this is right here because it's plastic underneath, and you just push up, they pop up right through the center, and you, and you take it out. So you just continue to do that, and there'll be one after another, as long as you just push up straight, and you can just pull the staples out. And it's just a lot easier than trying to attack them individually or bending this material. You'll have to bend it later on when you're trying to replace it and use the hairdryer in order to to be able to get the staple gun in the middle of there, but uh, we'll show you that later on. So, staples are all coming out. These are all popping up. Once you get this off, your second round of staples are here, and then underneath there, there's another round of staples that are holding the vinyl down to the plastic backing board. So, unfortunately, in this process here, you're, you're going to have to do these individually because this material is too thin to uh, lift up all the staples together. You can use a small screwdriver like this, or this is actually a staple remover. Um, you can get uh, in any office supply store and just work them. Just be careful not to put your, your hand in front of it if you're working over here on this side because it can slip at times and you'll just go right into your hand and that can be quite painful. So I know from experience. Why not to do that? So you just got to do the pink staking process of taking out all these staples individually. And uh, I'll show you when it's done. So all the staples, all the staples are currently out. You just take this off, put it aside, and you know, deal with that later. This is a little bit easier. If you have one of these, it makes your life a lot easier. If you don't, a large flat head screwdriver would work as well because now this material is a lot thicker. You're able to get underneath it and you can lift up. You don't really care about breaking this material, but once you get it started, you can pretty much lift up all the staples with, with the material. You not have to go. So as you can see, this comes up much easier. I think the first couple of seats I did they're all individually, so there's a little bit of a time saver. So there's, all the staples are out. There's some stitching over here. I'm just going to lightly cut through the stitching, and I'll just separate it here. I'll be able to get this whole cover off. Be careful. Staples can be sharp. 
if you opt not to take them out. Now, in here, actually, I'm going to have to take it off from this side because it's going to make life a little easier for the little slice. Instead of trying to preserve plastic that's underneath. Will sort of rip off. There, there's some some piping that's stitched all the way down to here. You'll have to cut through that. But this is what I was talking about as far as the uh, plastic that's underneath. We'll just lay this out and maybe tape it to the bottom while we're assembling it and uh, start getting rolling on the uh, vinyl wrap. Okay, so we got that cover off. Now, as you can see, this piece here where the piping was is actually a separate piece of foam. So, uh, the piping was stitched in to the bottom here, or stapled in actually, and uh, I'm just going to leave this little divider here, put this back here. This is a little bit lower than, uh, than this one here, so I'm probably going to put some vinyl material that I have left over underneath to prop it up a little bit. This way, it just levels it out a little bit more there. I'll show you when I do that later on. So I have this piece that was sort of worn out because the uh, there was a huge rip there and I guess this was exposed so there's a large valley in here that needs to be filled and uh, I think I'm going to do it one of two ways, not sure which one. I got some of this cotton from one of my pillows from my couch. That could be one way to do that. I'm trying to avoid any type of sharp lines from, let's just say, a piece of foam like this uh, placed in here. I think it'll compress once the vinyl wraps around it. Uh, to where you don't really notice it. Maybe just a little. So I'll play around with that and figure out which way I want to do it. Probably glue a piece in and uh, Continue on putting the plastic over and then wrapping with the vinyl. Okay, so after you've already cut your piece, now always measure extra. You know, I got at least probably two and a half inches over here on this side, even more on this side here. Uh, same with the top and bottom, you know. And um, I took this plastic in order to not have it have creases underneath, I just pulled it up taut and taped it with some uh, clear packing tape and that just keeps it out of my way so I can work with the vinyl um, instead. This is going to take a lot of patience, okay? So, and most of the staples you see me put in now, you're going to be taking out. I mean, uh, I've already, this is my fourth piece that I'm doing and just about 1,200 staples gone through. We're probably going to, all said and done, maybe about 1,400 staples. So, this was a good investment. Otherwise, my hands would have been nice and sore. So, um, what you want to do is you want to start getting the straight pieces tacked in so they're in place so you can start pulling all the rest of the stuff. So, we'll, we'll just start pulling and uh, these are all going to come out. They're not going to stay, they're not, they'll not be in here. I'll be repositioning this in order to get the creases out. We just want to get a bunch in down here, pull this way, and then you can start working on the hardest part, which is that any type of bend that you might have. And you know, the one is 
kind of stretchy, so you can pull on this. The hair dryer is your friend. And when you get to corners and things like that, you'll want to heat that up so it's much more flexible, stretches a lot more, and gets a lot of these creases out that are going to really start to, to uh, come into play. So but this is a corner here. Once you get most of it just pulled away, you're starting to work with this. You just have to pull and staple and pull and staple and remove staples until you figure out exactly how this is going to come to where it's totally smooth. Okay, I'll uh, tack this up and give you an update in a little while. So, this is all of the excess that you're going to have to stretch out and pull it. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do it right now, but I know I'm going to need to heat it up thoroughly in order to stretch enough of that material over without really making a lot of creases. So I'm pulling this as I'm heating it up. And you can see it's starting to conform. Just need to heat it up more. These staples that I just put in right there, I'll have to remove because they're just preventing me from pulling this further. So as you put some in and you put other ones in, you have to take some of those out in order to just keep pulling and get all of these, these wrinkles out. So I'm going to remove these staples here. And then I'll pull some more and I'll hopefully be able to get most of these into that right here. Okay, so as you can see, this is what this corner looked like. And in order to make this turn over here, you're going to have to really give it a bunch of pleats. You know, as you provide a nice smooth corner finish like that. But really, the ultimate goal is to get this as flat as possible so that uh, when the seat goes down, it's not uneven or whatever. So we'll be trimming a lot of this away, probably redoing a lot of these staples, maybe pulling a little bit, you see, like that, and then putting a staple right there to hold it so that these little pleats don't follow into the side as well. They're okay up here, but not down here. So... I'm going to start this corner here and show you how I go about getting this into something like this in a moment. Okay, I've been heating this up for a few minutes now, and uh, that's the trick as, to for, as far as getting corners and bends like that. It'd be very difficult to do without without heating up. So, uh, and also another tip is if uh, it's nice to give yourself extra material because it's easier for you to pull. You can grab more to be able to give more strength to pull. And or if you have someone else that can help you pull while you hit the staple, so you can really get any of these creases that remain underneath out. That's also helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do this corner, and I'll speed up the video so you don't have to sit here for. 10 minutes watching me do it, but you'll get the gist of it. So as you can see, it doesn't look that pretty, but a lot of this excess is going to be trimmed away and I will probably be removing some of these staples to reposition some of these creases to just be able to fold them over, eliminate them, and uh, just get rid of as much excess as possible to get this as flat as possible. So I've trimmed some of this off here and now it's time to trim some more. <clears throat> Bring this backing mesh back into the picture to sort of 
what you want to do is not put any permanent staples in the vinyl anywhere on the edge of this paper here because you're going to have to staple some more here and then have another row of staples here for that finishing bead that uh, we put on. So you kind of want to be a little bit further in than, uh, than these two here. So I'll just make like a mark as a reference point so I know where to, f where to follow and uh, when I'm putting my permanent staples. And that should be fine going all around. I'll use that same measurement for the uh, remainder. So as you can see, there's no shortage of staples here, <clears throat> but I'm basically just spreading out the pleats and just making them as flat as possible. Wherever I see something that's sticking up, I'll just shoot it with a staple, get it flat, and then uh, trim off. So now I just have to deal with some of these. I'll probably add some more staples here, and uh, that should be flat enough. So I'll continue to do that with uh, all the other corners. Okay, so this is the uh, sort of finished product, but before we just cover it up, as you can see, there's a lot of staples, but you know, you wanna cover all of the material this way, there's no uh, pulls, and the corners, you just have to just heat up. That's the key that made life so much easier and create some pleats in order to be able to make your folds less bulky, and it's, it's, it's flat enough. Okay, so what we want to do next is just place this so that you cover as many of the ex of the staples as possible and make it even on both sides before you staple. Uh, the goal here is to just have no staples exposed so it looks nice and clean. We'll be stapling on uh, the edges here because after that we'll have this as the final. So you want to place this covering bead around and see if it fits nicely. And at this point it looks good. It looks like it's going to cover every single staple. Um, so we remove these. And start stapling this in sporadically. You don't have to go crazy with this one because the uh, the other piece is going to have staples into that as well. Okay, so we put staples sporadically around, and now I'm going to put this on. See how stiff it is? Okay. Staples need to go in the middle of this thing here. Very difficult to do if you try to catch this little gap with where the staple's gonna go. I've tried doing it, but it, you usually you always catch an edge or something like that. So, once again, we go back to the hair dryer. And you'll see after you heat it up for a while, it starts to get really soft. At that point, you could bend the flap over and put your staple in. So you'll do this as you go around. And you'll need something to be able to bend it back while you hit the staple. So I'll just show you one right now. And then you just keep going around. And that should be like the final stage of it. So. This is one's taking a little bit longer to actually heat up. And now you can see how it's bending. Had I done that previously, it would have probably cracked. Yeah, okay, get it really close because it really needs to warm up. And okay, now you can see how it, it twists and bends. So we can reuse this. I'll shut this off, place it where it needs to be. I'll take, this is actually a shoehorn, but it actually worked out well for me. Yeah. Let's see if you can get this down 
the shot. Okay. Take this. Bend it back like that to open it up. And take the staple gun. So now it's in there. It starts to get hard really quick. So what you need to do is just take this and sort of bend it back. If it's not going back easily, some more heat. So this one takes time. I don't really put all that much, but you just keep working it around. And then just put sporadically some staples and we're pretty much done here, you know. So just to show you the front, it came out pretty good. You know, I'm happy with it, and I think this will do just fine. Hey, if this video helped you out, just hit the like button, thumbs up. Uh, that helps this get out to more people and helps me out as well. So if you get any value out of it whatsoever, it doesn't take much to hit that button. Just please hit that button. And if you want to subscribe, please subscribe. So uh, you'll see more videos because I have a lot more projects down the pike. Take care. So this is what the finished product looks like on the back side. This one came out the best out of the four that I've done. No visible staples. Looks pretty nice and flat. And this is the finished product. So I don't know if you see this right here, but there's a uh, indent on the foam because of the two pieces of vinyl that were stitched together. Um, I'm actually okay with that. It gives it a little bit of a contour design look to it. So there's a little bit of lumpiness here and there, but overall I am happy with the finished product. And the completed upholstery job.